Hi friends, it's me again. I just saw you in that other video, but we're gonna get together on this one and talk about how we're gonna start our project. If you miss the demonstration in class, this video is for you. This is work that we are gonna be doing inside of our sketchbooks. The sketchbook that you have that I gave you at the beginning of the year is a perfect um, tool for you to be using right now. If for some reason you cannot find that book, go ahead and um, grab a piece of paper or maybe you can take two pieces of paper and, and put them together so that you can have your own sketchbook. Um, you can transfer this information to the one that I gave you, but I'd like to talk to you about how we're gonna get started on our, our underwater scene. We are gonna be focusing on how to draw some of these really intricate types of fish. We are gonna be talking about like we did with our landscape in the beginning of the year, how there are some areas in the back. We will probably be doing some work with overlapping. Let's get started inside of our sketchbooks. Go ahead and take that out and I'll meet you in a second with a pencil and your sketchbook. All right, friends, now that you've got your pencil and a sketchbook, um, I want to just let you know what we're gonna be doing is learning how to draw a type of fish um, inspired by the fish that we see in the rainbow fish. And it doesn't need to look exactly like this, but I do want you to pay attention to the type of shapes that we're gonna look at and um, take a look at the size of these fish. You know, they are fairly large, the ones that are in the main focus, and they are filled with large scales. They have some sections um, and they're all broken apart. I also want to um, remind you that we'll probably be putting in some background stuff that we would find in the ocean. So let's put this to the side, take out your sketchbook, and open up to a blank page. Once you find your blank page, go ahead and divide it into four sections. Later on, we're gonna erase one of these sections so we have a big part. But for right now, we can make a small fish together. First thing that we're gonna do is draw the body of our fish, and it's generally a circle shape. I don't need to make this perfect right now. I'm making a sketchbook. So I'm going to draw the top fin. I'm gonna draw the back fin and then some fins underneath. These are organic types of shapes. They are very loose. They are not um, perfect. You will separate the front section of your fish with a curved line and add an eyeball. Let's look at the smile. This is a standard smile, but if we wanted something that was more like the fish that we saw or more like a fish's real mouth, let's make it a little bigger. If you draw a heart on your fish and then erase the lines from the fish's body, you will have a much bigger fish mouth, okay? This is just a heart and then a curved line inside. I'm gonna add an eyeball so my fish doesn't look like a ghost and add some scales. Notice how big these scales are, friends. I want you to remember that we are going to be coloring in our fish and we will be painting as well. We don't want to make our fish scale so small that it becomes really difficult to paint and color later. So add some large fish scales and then you're pretty much done with your fish. This side section on the right, I'm gonna make one big section by erasing this line. All of a sudden, I've given myself a big space to draw. Let's draw a big fish together. Instead of a circle, why not try to make our fish a little bit more like an oval? Add the top fin again, add the back fin, and add those fins on the bottom. Friends, remember that organic shapes do not have to look like anything in particular, okay? We're gonna separate the face from the body with a curved line and add an eyeball. 
I will put on my heart mouth again. I happen to really like this shape. Sometimes you have to make adjustments with your eraser and that's okay. That's what erasers are for, right? So I'm adding in these little scales, except notice again, they're not little. I want you to um, probably stretch yourself and make your scales bigger than what you're comfortable with. You want to have room. I'm going to add some little lines on my fish fins here and scoot on over to my last section. Friends, I'm going super fast in this part of the video, but that's because I want you to just know you can make your fish look like really any type of fish. Once you've done all three fish, you can play around with what might live in the background of your landscape. You can put in some seaweed, you can put in some coral, you could put in tiny fish, um, give your fish some environment to live in. We know this is an underwater scene, so we are going to fill our um, sketches with a few things we might find in the deep sea. I've gone ahead and added a little fish back here. I am adding all the same features that I did for my big fish, but I'm making it small. This gives our underwater landscape a sense of scale, not fish scales, scale as it is in size. We have a big fish, we have a small fish, and you're gonna see here in a second when I add some other details, how do you make it look like things are behind other objects? You are going to overlap. We practiced this a lot last year, and you are going to start and stop when you want to make something look like it's behind something else. Just take your time, have fun. These are only sketches. If you want to put in some ground, that's fine. You can put in anything you'd like. Uh, we are going to be making our final fish on a very big piece of paper. It will be the size of about this whole sketchbook page, but we will just be putting one giant fish on it. You need to make three sketches here in your sketchbook and, and add lots of different details. All right, great job. Students, friends, boys and girls, you did great. This is gonna be perfect practice to set us up for next week using that big white sheet of paper that is coming home in your Friday folders. It is very important that you keep that safe. We will not be using that until we come back from our Thanksgiving break, please make sure that you put that somewhere super safe because from now until Thanksgiving, after that week after Thanksgiving is kind of a long time, it's over a week, and you wanna make sure that your materials stay safe. Leave them maybe in your Friday folder, um, keep it ready for our next art class because we will be using that final white piece of paper to do our project. In the meantime, I hope you draw lots of other different kinds of fish and maybe you include some other underwater animals that you're going to have in um, your scenery. Have a wonderful, wonderful break and I will see you guys really, really soon. Email me if you have questions. Bye.